Hello, and welcome to today's Quick Plays video on Advanced EV in Poker. We've done another video on Basic EV, but there are many situations in poker when a Basic EV formula just doesn't quite cut it. So in this video, I'll show you a more complex EV formula and how to use it with an example. The Basic EV formula we worked with in the past was EV equals percentage W times money W minus percentage L times money L. So essentially what we stand to win multiplied by how often we'll win minus what we stand to lose multiplied by how often we'll lose. If this seems confusing at all, please first watch the basic EV video and then come back to this one. But there are times when we need a more complex version of this formula. So let's look at an example to get us started. In this hand, it folds to the cutoff who opens. We semi bluff three bet with eight six suited. The cutoff four bets to 23 and we five bet shove. Like most plays in poker, we can proof this using some simple math, so let's pull out our EV equation. You may notice that this basic formula doesn't account for all possible outcomes. Once we shove, there are three things that can happen. One, he calls and we lose. Two, he calls and we win. Or three, he folds and we win preflop. So at this point, the basic EV formula needs to be expanded to account for each outcome. The expanded formula would then look like this. EV equals F times pot plus C times percentage W times money W minus C times percentage L times money L, where F stands for the times villain folds and C stands for the times villain calls. And if you only know one of them, you can always figure out the other since their sum is always 100%. If you know F is 20%, then you take 100% minus 20% and get 80% for C. Now we can just start plugging numbers in. Since most of these numbers are related, F plus C equals 100% and percentage W plus percentage L equals 100%, it makes life even easier. Let's review how to get each number quickly. F and C are estimations based upon how often you think villain will call your shove. If you think he was 4-bet bluffing a ton and thus wouldn't be able to call your shove often, then F would be a very large percentage. Conversely, if you think villain were 4-betting a strong range and would call your shove often, then F would be a small percentage and C would be quite large. Percentage W and percentage L are based upon equity, which we can calculate using a free program like Equilab. The percentage W is your equity against the range villain would open, 4-bet, and call your shove with. The pot is the size of the pot before you shove, money W is what you would win the times you get called and win, and money L is what you would lose the times you get called and villain wins. Now we just have to make some assumptions on his range and frequencies, plug in some numbers, and proof the validity of this shove. Let's assume villain would call our shove with 10s plus ace king. In that case, we would have 27% equity, so percentage W is 0.27 and percentage L is 0.73. Let's also assume that Villain does bluff 4-bet sometimes, so we assume he'll 4-bet fold 25% of the time. This means F is 0.25 and C is 0.75. Now for the dollar amounts and we can solve. The pop before we shove is 34.50, so that's easy. If we shove and Villain wins, we lose $96. Because Villain has the shortest stack, we can only lose $83 plus the 13 to match his 4-bet. Our $10 3-bet no longer belongs to us, and thus we cannot lose it once we shove. If we shove and Villain calls, we can win 117.5. Because we have the largest stack, the shortcut is just current pot plus Villain stack size. Now we have all of the necessary inputs. We see at this point our shove has a negative 20.14 expected value. Given the parameters and assumptions we've used, this is a bad shove and we should avoid making it. But since we are analyzing this hand away from the table and have this extra time, let's do some experimenting. Assume for a moment that Villain 4-bet bluffs a lot more often, and thus we can expect a fold from him 60% of the time. That changes F to 0.6 and C to 0.4. Let's also change his calling range from 10s plus ace king to 10s plus ace queen plus. This increases our equity up to 30% and thus changes both percentage W and percentage L. Now if we plug everything in, we notice our EV jumps up to plus 7.92. All of a sudden, our shove is looking pretty good. With this formula, the money won and lost will remain constant, but changes in ranges and frequencies can alter the outcome a ton. Essentially, the more villain folds and we pick up the pot outright, the better for us. The more equity we have when called, the better, since we'll pick up the all-in pot more often and lose less often. And if we can ever increase both our equity when called and the times villain folds preflop, the better and better our semi-bluff will be. 
Knowing how and when to expand the basic EV formula can greatly benefit you on and off the table. Now in real time you won't be able to plug and play with the formula, but with enough off-table practice things will get ingrained and you will be able to more correctly estimate the math at the tables. And to be honest, there are times when you could expand the formula even further, but just knowing how to do this gives you a nice mathematical leg up on your opponents. Same as always, if you have any questions please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck and happy grinding.